everyone. Welcome to Tuesday. On Snapchat, I said it was Monday. Um, so that's what kind of a day I've had. Um, we are going to talk to Jennifer Klarman Gumina, who is uh, our JCLAR. And normally I'm really good and I get like a little bio beforehand, but I don't have a bio this time because I got stuck in YouTube land. So um, JCLAR, I'm going to give you the sound and you can just do your own bio and then move out and talk to us about branding. And I can do it on you. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. As Alyssa said, my name is Jennifer Klarman Gumina, and uh, a lot of people call me Jay Clark. You can call me Jen, Jennifer, hey you, whatever. I do not care. Um, I live in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is halfway between D.C. and Richmond. So I live right off of I-95, which if you've ever heard of that, it's like traffic hell. So I, uh, I like working from home. It works for me. <laughs> um, I am a gold premiere of Team Perfectly Polished. I joined Posh on September 9th of 2013. So my big anniversary is coming up, fourth Poshiversary. I know, I'm so excited. And I will be at the PRM in uh, Maryland, right outside DC on that date. So I'm really excited. I think we have over 300 Poshers coming. So what a great way to celebrate your anniversary of Posh. Um, I... Don't know what else to say about myself except that I come from corporate America. I um, I feel like I have the drive for corporate America, but I don't have the mouth or the filter for it. Um, so I would be in meetings saying what was on my mind and getting myself in trouble. And also, I think I felt very... Um, limited in my creativity and my ability to be who I wanted to be in my position and in my role um, because uh, there are a lot of rules and regs you got to follow when you're working for a large corporation and I've worked for several fortune 500 companies and they all pretty much do things the same way so um, posh is my third company of its type I don't say direct sales I don't really like that term because with posh I share and that's pretty much what I've done um, with the other companies. I did feel like a salesperson. I felt like basically they were sending me out to sh shill vac vacuums and they wanted me to do it the same way they did it. Um, but with Posh, I've been able to brand myself, be really creative um, and create a business that I've enjoyed um, sharing and that I've enjoyed um growing, I guess. So we're going to talk about branding. I don't do a ton of Zooms and I need to get better at it. So normally what I would do is just chat, 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 and then we could open things up for questions at the end. Is that normal? You can yeah. do whatever we want. Usually we just chat, 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 and um, people can throw questions in or unmute themselves as they go, or we do questions. Yes. And it's really whatever is best for you. I like that. I think that's a little bit more interactive. And can fun. you see the chat okay on your end? Let me move over. Um, I see a bunch of face sales. Let me go. I know I've done this before, you guys. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, there we go. Okay. Good? Yes, I'm good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Um, so basically I, I did a post earlier and some of you, when you responded, you were, you were the spectrum, the whole shebang. Some of you were like, I, I think I've got a brand. I feel really good about my brand. Some of you were like, what is a brand? Um, so if this is above you or below you, um, just hang in there with me and then kind of let me know if, if there's something we didn't really touch on. I am not an expert. I am not a professional. Um, I am not perfect. I'm just kind of sharing with you some things I've learned through my own research and my own doing over the past four years. Um, and you'll find that even people who are paid thousands of dollars to help create branding and marketing for big companies are not perfect. And because things are constantly changing with marketing, um, with social media, there is no there is no formula or 100%. This is how you market yourself and this is what's going to bring you sales and what's going to bring you customers. So the biggest advice I have is just have fun with it. Figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and just keep rolling with it. Um, so what is branding? Branding is the practice of basically creating a name, a symbol, a logo, anything that really differentiates your product from other products. Now when we talk about the product, 
you guys are the product. You're the posh consultant. Why are you the product and not the things you sell? Well, that's because the things that we sell are all the same, pretty much, right? We all have the same catalog to choose from. We all have the same website to choose from. So because I can buy posh from any of the 50,000 active consultants in the United States, your branding is going to set you aside from Sally down the street um, who just got a kit because she saw it on a yard sale page and just signed up. So your brand is really your promise to your customers. It tells them what, what they can expect from you, um, your products, your services, and it sets you apart from Sally down the street. It sets Alyssa apart from Kylie, Kylie apart from me, Alex apart from Emily, all of that. Um, and I'm not Italian, but I talk with my hands. I'm married into Italian, so that's what I'm doing here. So <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and your brand should really speak to who you are as not only a consultant, but as a person. Um, it should kind of set the stage for what people can expect from you. I feel like my branding kind of sets the stage for people to maybe not take things a as seriously as they normally would. Um, J. Clark Posh's tagline is, let me freaking pamper you. And I say the word freaking a lot. Um, and that may turn some people off, I'm not sure, but honestly, that's who I am. And it's not this desperate, let me freaking pamper you. It's like, seriously, girl, you are going and going and going, just let me freaking pamper you. Just let's do this thing. Um, so that kind of tells them a little bit about me and who I am. Um, so we did a little bit of pre-work. I don't know if anyone had time to do that. I apologize for posting it so soon before our Zoom, but it's really just kind of a, a, an exercise um, that you, you can even do after this. But really, you want to sit down and think about what is going to set you aside from someone else doing the same, same thing as you. Um, what is the biggest focus you have in your business? There are some amazing consultants who really focus on the whole package, the presentation. They always order product to come to them because they want to package it up, make it look beautiful, and either send it back out or deliver it, hand deliver it. Um, Can I interrupt you for a second without yeah. you using it? Um, and if you guys, most of you guys were on last week, or if you have not watched last week, go back and watch last week. Um, this can very, very easily, we talked about our big why and how our business big why and all that stuff. So when you're thinking about your branding, think about your, your big why and, and that let them kind of drive each other and come together. Thank you. I love that. I love that. Um, so there are a lot of people who are ingredient gurus. So anyone who's really ingredient conscious knows that by going to these consultants, they're going to get the best information about ingredients. So number two is to think about your target audience. And yes, we never want to put ourselves in like a bubble. We never want to say, well, I am only looking to pamper sports moms or sports dads, and I'm only looking to pamper this, but you really do want to think about if you were to post on Instagram or if you were to post on Facebook, what is the majority of your audience? Who is that and what does it look like? What is that demographic? Um, and then be ready to get outside of that demographic. So kind of think about, you want it to appeal to them, but you also want it to be a little bit universal. Uh, number three was, what are some of your likes and personal traits? I like the word freaking. I say it a lot, so I used it. <laughs> I have dimples, so sometimes I talk about my dimples. Um, do you love adventure? Do you love going on roller coasters? Um, chocolate, what is, what is it for you? What is, there is, a lot of people say there's nothing special about me. OMG, you are so wrong. There are a ton of things that are special about you. And honestly, if you don't know, ask your friends. They will tell you. It could be your smile. It could be your ability to always put a positive spin on something. It could be your wit, um, your intelligence. It could be your heart. Heart's a great one. <laughs> um, so any of those things are specific to you. All right, now number four is to do a little research. I meant to put an album together for you guys and I didn't. And here's why I didn't do it. Because a lot of times in our business, people are looking for copy and paste and cookie cutter. And I don't ever want you to feel that you need to be like someone else to be successful. So while I could go and post a bunch of pictures and albums for you of great things I've seen on Instagram, 
it's all out there for you, honestly. It's on Nike, it's on um, Team Posh, it's on Instagram, it's everywhere. But you can do a little research on your own and look for people who you already follow. Maybe you have favorite celebrities, authors. Maybe you have a friend at Norwex who you just think has the best branding. Go look and see what they're doing. Do they have a logo? Do they have a tagline? Do they have a signature look? Do they use the same font all the time? What is it that sets them apart? Look at their Facebook, Instagram. If you're on Tumblr and Snapchat, those are beyond me. Showing my age here. Not user-friendly for over 35. Sorry. <laughs> I can kind of use Snapchat, but I don't. Um, so take note on things you like, things you don't like, and then also think about what is something you can reproduce. So it's a grand idea to get off of this training and go, I'm going to implement all of these things, and I'm going to get a new brand, and I'm going to get a new logo, and I'm going to make a website, and I'm going to get all these things, and then you literally <laughs> feel the world on your shoulders. So start small, um, just like when you leave something like Uncon or PRM or even a team training, make a list, make a list of places you want to start. So let's say if you have no branding at all, you're going to want to start with these pre-work things. What sets you apart? Who's your target audience? What are some of your likes? All of that. And then doing research. And then number two may be figure out my brand. And then number three could be to go from there and pick little pieces. So I also don't want you to think, that's a great question, Emily. Um, I also don't want you to think that um, branding is specific. So like Alyssa talked about earlier, she wants a personal logo for herself. She's at a place in her business where she feels like people know her, people know what she's offering. So she's ready for that personal logo. You may not be there yet. You may just be looking for a hashtag that you can use. You may just be looking for a name for your VIP group. So those are all different components of branding, and there's no, I don't want you to leave today and go, I need a logo, I need a this, I need a that, and I need to pay someone to make this beautiful thing for me. No, we're just kind of brainstorming and getting it together of where you wanna kind of start things. So you asked Emily about um, where to use your IC, your independent consultant logo versus your personal logo. So, the independent consultant logo was given to us by home office to utilize for <clears throat> basically things where we are marketing or sharing posh and we want to do it in a compliant way with home office. So basically it's kind of our way of saying this is in home office. This is me. This is I'm an independent consultant and this is Jay Clar posh. This is not home office. Um, so I would say you would use them in conjunction with one another. Personal logos are amazing for things like um, note cards, letters, um, letterhead, if you wanted to put it on your car. Um, Alyssa, why do you want a personal logo? What do you plan to use it for? So I plan to use it for um, more myself. Like I have several different business plans in the works. So mm -hmm. I want to be able to tie everything back into my, this, this is me mm -hmm. versus this is Poshy list. This is, you know, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I want to be able to tie everything back together. Um, do you, I have a question for you. Do you use the IC logo often? When do you use it? <clears throat> I, I don't use it a ton. Sometimes if I'm going to try to take something that home office made and, and kind of tweak it and make it my own, I will utilize the independent consultant logo because I want, I want people to know that this is my representation and this isn't something from home office. Um, I think that something like your personal logo would look great on a headshot as well. Um, I, there are sometimes I use the personal logo just as you saw with my Bitmoji, I like to throw it on my t-shirt. So it kind of says, she's talking about something posh related. And so people kind of know where I'm headed. Um, so I think that the independent consultant logo is, is a great starter. And then you can kind of move on into your personal logo. But the IC logo is always going to be there. And it's always kind of be, be a part of things because you do still need to brand that you are with perfectly posh. Um, 
so I think sometimes when you're creating something, you kind of feel which way you're going with it. If it's something that you're sending out an opportunity packet, something you created maybe on like Vistaprint or something like that, a lot of times I feel like your personal logo is, is probably going to be more appropriate on that. Whereas if you're on a big banner that's in like a street market or something of that nature, you're, you're probably going to need to incorporate the IC logo somewhere so that people don't think, oh, perfectly posh home office is here. No, this is an independent consultant who is here. Um, I saw a question, I'm sorry. Swipe up, Jay Clar, swipe. Myself, you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, you could. So, Emily, I really think that it comes down to is this something that I'm going to be using to market to the masses? If I'm marketing to the masses and it's important for me to represent myself as an independent consultant and not home office or not representing home office, then you definitely want to use the independent consultant logo. Um, another example would be Alyssa make it a shirt made with her logo on the front or the back and then on the sleeve she may have the independent consultant logo. I know you're probably in your mind thinking graphics wise where would I put both um, but you still definitely want to differentiate. Um, if you take pictures do you use the IC logo Alyssa? I don't understand your question. I'm sorry. So when I post pictures, like pictures of product or me using the product or whatever, oh, no. pictures, I do not put any sort of a logo on there. Yes. Every, think, everything does not need to be poshed. Um, I think a lot, awesome. times, <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of times, and I did come from a previous company where I had to send everything into a compliance department. And oh my gosh, that really kind of killed my buzz because I'd want to make business cards or I'd want to make flyers or anything. And I had to email it to compliance. Could you guys imagine waiting for support to come back and say, hey, this is great. You can use it. So let's say your kiddo uses your sleepy sleep stick and falls asleep. And it's like the most adorable thing since Muppet Babies. I don't even know. So, and you want to post it. Guess what? You don't have to posh it. You don't have to. You don't have to put the logo on it. So, good question. And also, I, just so you guys know, I'm back and forth on this, but in my brain, the way that I differentiate that is if I want it to be something that is shareable, if you will, then I'll put the logo on it so that it's more of a not branded. So I don't feel like people are just jacking my picture because I know it's on the internet. People can just take it. It's whatever. But if I feel like if I put a logo on it, I'm like sharing it versus them just stealing my picture. If they just take my picture, then I can be pissed off and yell at them. So another, another good tool for that, if you're not quite ready for a logo, I really recommend getting something like PicMonkey. I am obsessed with PicMonkey. I think it was $33 a year for the paid version and they do have the free website. The reason I like the paid version is because I can use my own fonts, which means I can figure out which fonts Posh is using, that catalog. And then, yes, I love it, Alex. It's so awesome. And then I can create things using that font. So Lemon Tuesday was the last catalog and you bet your bottom dollar I use that all over the place. But what you can create is, um, what I'm trying to say is you can create a watermark. And any of us can do that. We don't need a graphic designer to do that for us. If you need help, let me know. But PicMonkey lets you create a transparent canvas. You just click transparent and you can type whatever you want over top of it. So I typed J. Clark Posh. I gave it a little bit of a shadow and I put a diamond in front of it because diamonds are my signet or logo or whatever. And I made it black with a transparent logo. And then I downloaded a free app called, I think it's literally called Free Easy Watermark. So anytime I created a graphic and I wasn't in like a sharing kind of place, because you know when you create a graphic and it ends up on like 800 places, it's not as effective anymore. I share a lot of graphics. That sounded really bad. <laughs> I feel like my nephew, he's like, I don't mind sharing. I just don't want to share my snacks or my toys. 
That's everything, right? That's everything. I share a ton of graphics. But anyway, like Alyssa said, let's say maybe it was a picture of your child or your dog or whatever and you didn't want. You can use this app to add a watermark to it and you can create it. You can make it as transparent as you want or as obvious as you want. You can put it down in the, in the corner. You can put it, like if I put it right here around my head, anywhere, and it kind of signs it and says, hey, this is my picture. So that way if someone tries to post it somewhere else, they look kind of silly because it's watermarked with your information. So look into a watermark if you're not ready for the logo yet. All right, so we talked a little bit about personal branding and why it, how it applies to Posh. So you're really branding you. It's not necessarily a product. It's a branding of you as the consultant. Um, a lot of people kind of wonder, do you need to brand yourself and your team? Um, and it, it's really up to you, and it depends on where you're at in your posh journey and what you want. How many of you have a team that you are thinking about starting to brand? Like you have some people under you, and you really are starting to think, hey, it's like a team name and maybe a logo or something like that. Anyone? Hands in the air. Kelly, maybe? Okay. Cool. So, a my recommendation is to try to keep it as, as concise for yourself as you can. Um, so, and you may not want to. So Alyssa may have branded the, pa the Posh Padawans, and she may not want her brand to be like Senorita Padawan, or I don't know, what's, what's the Queen Padawan? <laughs> it's, it's, it's Yoda, ma'am. Yeah. I'm going to need you to get it together. <laughs> I am married to a Star Wars okay. uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell my husband, <laughs> be like, I didn't know what the Queen Padawan was. He'll divorce me tomorrow. You'll see. <laughs> so she may not feel that her team isn't her team or what she chose for her team is in line with her personal business or her personal branding, but she could use elements of it. So for example, my team is perfectly polished. I paint my nails constantly. They're always done. They're always fresh. Um, and we are classy. We are polished, we um, perform well under pressure, and we are beautiful, and everyone loves us because we're diamonds. Um, so, but Perfectly Polished has a diamond as its logo. So I utilize the diamond in J. Clar Posh and everything I do with J. Clar Posh. Do all my customers know about my team and what my team's all about? Not unless I tell them, but it's a little bit easier for me to kind of use that diamond all over the place instead of just okay well this is team and this is my brand and da, 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 all over the place so um, I hope that kind of makes sense and, and kind of gives you some ideas but really kind of start with your vision of your team your values sit down and write down what are your team values um, is it positivity is it customer service is it um, making sure you have the best gifts. It's pronounced gifts, I think, not gifts. Um, being funny, handling things with humor, whatever it is, sit down and think about your values and then think about how you wanna brand your team. But also know that as soon as you start building a team, you don't have to start branding your team. It's not a requirement to have a team name if you're a Pink Plus Three or even a Premier. There are no requirements of you to brand your team in any way. So don't let that stress you out. Um, where do I start? What do you guys think? Where, where would you probably start with this insane amount of stuff that we just talked about? I, I would probably start with a brainstorming or like I've seen the the posts on the Facebook that are like, if you could use five words to describe me, what would it be? Or like one word to describe me or whatever to kind of help your, your brain start working. Or like you said, ask your friends. Yeah. Ask the people who interact with you the most. So I kind of did that once. And then I also looked through all of my pictures and, um, it was really cool because I had, I realized that I had been branding myself with some things that I didn't even realize I had done. So I just really freaking love peanut butter M&Ms to a fault. The chin has about seven layers of concealer and foundation on it right now because 
of the stress in the M&Ms. Peanut butter M&Ms and I are like, like we need to get a retriever, a golden retriever, and we need to move in together immediately because we are so in love. It's ridiculous. And all these people had posted, I think it was in within a two week time frame that they had gone and gotten peanut butter M&Ms and were so excited and cursing me, of course, and tagging me in it. So without even realizing it, I had shared and shared and shared and branded myself as the peanut butter M&M girl. Didn't even mean to do it. It just happened. Um, and they all cursed me <laughs> and hated me. But you know what? I don't care because they're life. They're so good. So your friends are probably going to think of things where if they see it, they're going to tag you or they're going to tell you about it because they think of you. So um, I want to leave you with this. Um, I'm really proud of myself, Alyssa. Can I just say that I always say, oh, I'm going to pop on for a quick minute. And then like four hours later, I've just talked and talked and talked and talked. But I said a half an hour and I have four minutes. You are at a half an hour, my friend. I'm proud of you as well. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> Your time is money, so I recognize that. So I appreciate you taking time tonight. And all my West Coast gals, I'm really excited because this is like prime time for you. So I'm really, I'm, I feel so special. Um, so think about these brands. Coca-Cola versus Walmart soda. You guys ever had Dr. Thunder or anything like really weird like that? So think about the price difference in those and think about the branding and what you think of when you see those things. Think about Tiffany versus K Jewelers. What are the differences there? And why would people work their booties off for this gold necklace versus a K Jewelers necklace? Um, and how has Tiffany branded themselves? And Coca-Cola. Perfectly Posh from J. Clark Posh versus a donkey milk face mask from Target. <laughs> Anyone see the donkey milk face mask? <laughs> Excuse me, I believe Walmart carries that. Stop! It's donkey milk is the top ingredient. Okay, I mean, but I don't know it's why that's grosser than goat's milk. Because it's ass milk. <laughs> But okay, so I can run to Target right now. I can go to Walmart 24 hours just right down the road and I can get that disgusting face mask. But it looks all cool and neat and I can rub it all over my face. But why would somebody choose to buy from Perfectly Posh from J. Clar Posh or Alyssa versus going to Target and getting that? What are they getting from you? They're getting customer service. They're getting follow-up. They're getting, did you like it? What did you think? They're getting, oh girl, I know you loved that donkey milk face mask, I'm going to send you this. They get so much more from that. So make sure your brand tells people about that. Um, it's not like you're going to create a logo and it's going to tell them all of that, but the passion you put into your branding, the excitement you put into your branding, and the polished appearance of your branding is going to tell them that you take your business seriously and therefore you will take them seriously as a customer. The other thought I wanted to leave you with, and I, I don't know anything about your team, so please don't think I'm making any assumptions, but if you're going to be posh and you're going to brand yourself as posh, be posh and stick with posh. Um, I have been with three different companies. That's three. Good job, Jennifer. I was like, <laughs> three different companies. Um, and when I, I know that when I switched from my previous company to this current company, it was a shift for my customers. And I would never want to do that ever again. Like seriously, my mother-in-law still tells me about the bag she bought for me six years ago that she absolutely loves. But, and she's an amazing posh customer now, but, but when you brand yourself with something, people are going to connect you with it. So don't confuse them. Don't make them wonder if this is really it for you or if next week it's going to be something else. If you've switched companies, that's okay. Sometimes it takes kissing a lot of frogs to find your prince. It's cool. It happens. It took me kissing three frogs to find Posh as my prince. However, if, if next week my friend offers me an awesome kit deal on a company that I really like, I'm not going to sign up because it's going to confuse people. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. And if Posh isn't your prince, that's okay. I'm not saying Posh has to be your prince. Um, I'm just saying that if you're going to be Posh, be Posh. Um, don't be 
the pampering lady and also the jewelry lady and the some other things lady because I've seen it on lots of people's things and they're like are you still with so-and-so and are you still with so-and-so and it can be very confusing so that's just another thought I kind of had today okay I think that's it <laughs> do you have any <laughs> I know how do you end that I, this 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 is where I say questions compliments no I, I've been doing it out of order questions comments concerns compliments anyone <laughs> Emily, I like your shirt. Emily's a boss. Emily is my Siri. She takes notes on Coffee Talk now. Because she's always, but this is so funny, 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 funny story. So we, you know, everybody, they came up with the idea. Last week was her first week. And um, I got on Coffee Talk and I'm like, uh, where's Emily? Where's Emily? Where's <laughs> Emily? Okay, can somebody else take notes? <laughs> Your recording secretary did not show up. It was so funny. It was perfect. We don't have quorum. We can't have our meeting. No. <laughs> Lisa, do you have a question? Lisa, do you have a question, Mama? Does she know she's unmuted? No. Okay. Sorry. Hi, baby. <laughs> My oldest granddaughter. Hi. So cute. Um. Well, you guys... Um are welcome to follow, friend request, Instagram, whatever. Again, I am not perfect. I break a lot of rules. I post on my timeline way more than I should. So if you follow me or anything, don't think, well, Jay Clark does this, so I'm going to do it or anything like that. Just know that I am a very flawed human. <laughs> um, but I love getting to know other people and getting to see what you're doing with your posh business. If you ever post a face mask selfie, I will be one of the first people on there to help help you push it and help you share it without seeming like creepy gold premier posh person. <laughs> um, so I love Alyssa. I love Kylie. I love all of you. So thank you for your time. Um, and I do have something that I want to add in. Um, just remember, and I know that a lot of you guys have gone through reboot camp. So a lot of you guys have already heard my <laughs> spiel on this. Just remember if you're branding yourself as posh, if you are the posh lady, um, keep it posh. Don't, don't get political. Don't uh, mm -hmm. be controversial, controversial. Don't be like dirty mouthy or complainy or negative or whatever it is. If you are branding yourself as posh, then I don't care if it's your personal timeline and it's your personal online internet space that is just for you. It's not. You're branding yourself as posh and people will, you can turn people off very quickly by being polarizing or by being negative or so on and so forth. So just remember, as you are branding yourself as posh, keep it, keep it poshy. That's such a good point because I forgot to do that this past weekend and I had to go delete some things because my emotions came into play and I was like, oh, I'm going to say some things. And then I went back and deleted because she's so right. And you can say it's my personal timeline all you want, but where do you meet so many people? A lot of times it's through your personal timeline. Yep. Um, yep. So keep that in mind. Um, like she said, language is really important. Um, just, just think about who you would want to purchase from and who you would want to be your consumer. I love it. Felicity, you're amazing. Thank you so much, J. Clark. I love you the most. I'm so excited. Um, thank you, everybody who showed up with us. I am yes, thank you. Stop the recording. Goodbye, Internet.